So first off, you're all being too polite and too shy. I see everyone's salads are full. When I'm done speaking, they're going to come out with the entrees and they're going to take full salads to the back. So go ahead and eat. I will use my coaching voice. You don't have to be shy. Uh, what a great night it is. Uh, some people at our table were kind of commenting, you know, the video's going, coach, your video's going, our MC is up here talking, and we can't hear any of it. I said, that is good. What does that show you? That shows you the health of a program. And what makes Laurier special is this. It's that talking, it's that getting together, it's the people, it's the support, it's the energy, it's their tradition. It is the envy of players, coaches, and support staff at other schools. And I can tell you this, we don't have people that transfer out of here, we have people that transfer here. And a real sign of the health of a program is when your student athletes quickly after graduation want to come back and join and coach with you and coach the next group of Golden Hawks. And we have that in droves. Uh, what else shows this spirit? Well, in late August, we went up to Kingston for our first game of the year. And sure enough, more purple in the stands than whatever they wear, that ugly yellow mustard or whatever that is. How about Thanksgiving weekend? Most teams, when they host a Thanksgiving weekend, will do the away team the favor of putting that game on a Thursday or Friday, giving everyone kind of a mini buy of a Thanksgiving weekend. No, the Ottawa GG scheduled us 8 p.m. Saturday night of Thanksgiving weekend. Good. What did we do? We told our players, we told our parents, we told them to tell your whole families that we have the bye week the week before. Celebrate your Thanksgiving then. On Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend, we've got a business trip and we're gonna go take down the GGs. And again, we had more purple fans than GG fans in that stadium that night. How about the support of you? Kate shows these beautiful pictures and renderings of what's about to happen. But as you know, those that came out to the stadium this year, we pulled stands out there on flatbed trailers. We had a makeshift stadium, but because of you, there was a lot of spirit, a lot of energy. We had four regular season home games. We had two home playoff games. We went 6-0 in those games. The spirit was unbelievable. And despite not having a great stadium, like Queens, like Western, like Guelph, guess what? Their stadiums are half empty. Ours was makeshift, but it was full. And the atmosphere you created helped us win. So what do we have now? Well, guess what? We have unfinished business, right? So as positive as I am, there are 27 schools in this country. Only the Montreal Caravan are happy right now. The UBC Thunderbirds that lost in the Vanier Cup, they're upset. Western lost the week before, they're upset. Laval lost to Montreal in the Dunsmore Cup, the Quebec Championship, they're upset. We lost to Western, we're upset. Saskatchewan lost to UBC in the Hardy Cup, the Can West Championship, they're upset. Okay, and the further along you go, the losses become that much tougher. That Western one stung, and it stung for weeks. But when you finally get that stink and that stench of a loss off, and that took about two weeks post the Ace Cup, you're able to reflect back fondly on what was a positive season for this program. And I'll let you know, did you notice the teams I mentioned and the company we now carry? Laval, Montreal, Laurier, Western, Saskatchewan, and UBC. These are the premier football programs in this country. And you look past, you look past the second week uh, in the season and that was reflected in the top 10. We were always in that top six, kind of five, six, and we finished the season as a third ranked team in the country. And why is that? Well, it's not our current facilities. Maybe one day it'll be those facilities. It's not the size of our budget. It's quite simply put, our people are better than other people's people, right? Our players are hardworking players. These hardworking, good character players come from great families. That's why every road game, we have more family, more friends at those games than the home team does. It comes from great coaches, it comes from a great staff, and it comes from you. And we say this all the time in recruiting, and we're saying this to 17, 18, 19 year old people. It's not about the buildings, it's about the people in the buildings. But what I'm excited about is put our people in those buildings 
and it's over for everyone else. Um, I would be remiss, I'm kind of missing something in why we were as successful as we were this year and ranked number three at the end of the season. And it's quite simply put, we have the best player in the country. Taylor Algersma, our quarterback, put up one of the best seasons. Don't make the Dutch rifle uh, blush over there. But he put up one of the best quarterbacking seasons in U Sport history. And, uh, you know, he's in a couple weeks, he's going to go to Thai Cats Camp, a uh, great opportunity with the QB internship program. The last two years, he spent time with the Argos Camp, and it's really helped his game. Um, and he got honored at the OUA Awards this year as the OUA MVP. Very deserving. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say Coach Galloway, our offensive coordinator. Coach V and I get a first-hand look at Coach Galloway and Taylor in the office watching film on the squeaky whiteboard, uh, doing so much day in and day out. And the only guilt I have listening to all this and seeing all this is that on the website, Taylor's listed on the player roster, but he's not listed on the coaching roster. And he spends so much time in the football house, he deserves to be in both. Um, others receiving uh, OUA awards this year was our rookie, you can see him in the back to the right, uh, linebacker Ethan Gregorsek. He was the outstanding, uh, the rookie of the year in the OUA this year. And I bring him up, obviously he had a couple interceptions, he had a, several tackles, big plays all over the place, but it's the backstory how he got he, to, to be here. And this is my shout out for Coach V. Everyone knows Coach V is one of the best defensive coordinators in the country. But what they don't realize is a team with a condemned stadium doesn't just land the best linebacker in the country. This was years and years in the making, right? Coach V was on the sideline of the Durham Dolphins constantly. Uh, he now knows Curtis Ontario better than anyone else. And I can honestly say this, the day Ethan committed, that football house roof lifted for a little bit because we knew we got the best linebacker in the country and he lived up to it in his first year. Uh, others receiving awards was volunteer coach of the year in the OUA, offensive line coach Zach Scotto. Coach Scotto is a full-time high school teacher in town, and for most, that's a full-time job. No, not for Coach Scotto. On top of that, he spends 30 hours a week with our offensive line. On top of that, he runs our football players only first year study hall on Monday evenings and does all our academic tracking. And then as Kate alluded to it, and I'll change the words that she said, I was honored at the OUA Awards to stand up there on behalf of our entire staff and receive the staff of the year award, which they really need to change that name. <laughs> Exciting times next week as the East West Bowl will be at the University of Waterloo and we have a star-studded cast led by OUA MVP Taylor Algersma. Uh, two of his favorite targets, all Canadians, Raiden Thorne and Ethan Jordan will be joining him. Uh, offense lineman Josh Reitfeldt will be there. Defensive back Jahari Hastings will be there, and defensive lineman Chisenham Incitim. And Chisenham, yet again, is a walk-on here at Laurier. And other teams see us recruiting, they see us at events, all of this stuff, they're like, guys, what's the deal with Laurier walk-ons? Our walk-ons at Guelph, at Queens, at Western don't look like your walk-ons. Chisenham is 6'2", 310 pounds, and not to be outdone by fellow walk-on Luke Brubaker, Six foot five, 250 pounds, and Luke was just drafted by the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the second round, 16th pick overall this past week. Who would have thought growing up in Listowel, Ontario, no high school football in Listowel, no summer football in Listowel, wrote Coach V and I an email in the middle of COVID and three years later, he's being drafted by the Ham Hamilton Tiger Cats. Before he reports to Hamilton Tiger Cat training camp, this weekend he'll be in New York at the New York Jets mini camp. Next weekend, he's flying down to New Orleans to be at the New Orleans Saints uh, mini camp. So a bright future for Luke Brubaker. 
Speaking of the NFL, how about Isaiah Adams? Isaiah Adams was an offense lineman here in 2018 and 2019. And we talk about having goals, having aspirations. This young man didn't let a global pandemic stand in his way. While everything shut down in Canada, Isaiah started looking around. What JUCO is still at football? So he left us, unfortunately, in Canada, but we said, you go, Isaiah. You've got goals and aspirations. Go get them. And that's exactly what he did. He went to a JUCO, which led to him getting a full-ride scholarship to the University of Illinois. And a few short years later, who would have thought this young, kind, hardworking gentleman from Ajax, Ontario, couple years here at Laurier, on to Illinois, got drafted by the Arizona Cardinals in the third round. That's outstanding. <laughs> Isaiah is clearly going to be uh, a future legend, but tonight is all about our legends in here. And we've got an amazing group. So on behalf of everyone, let's give a great congratulations for our legends here tonight. And quite honest, my favorite thing of this event now is hearing from this, these legends, right? So whether you played in the 60s or 70s and we were called Waterloo Lutheran, or you played in the 80s up until the present day for Wilfrid Laurier University, what I'm always struck by is that the words in the speeches are so similar. I had great coaches. I love my teammates, I love my experience, I love the University of Laurier, and I love the greater Kitchener-Waterloo community. What does that tell you? Our people are better than everyone else's, right? And that's exactly what it is. The 2024 schedule is out. And I'll go on a little rant here and the players and coaches in the room will appreciate this. Two years in a row, the OUA has given us the toughest schedule. Good. Two years in a row, our non-combatants are York and U of T. Good. They originally gave us the first week by. They then thought, oh, that's unfair. Laurier had the first week by a couple years ago. Let's give them the second week by. Good. They set up our two longest trips of the year on the road, Windsor and Carleton, as the last two weeks of the year. Good. As you can see, there's kind of some sarcasm in here. But as we teach all our guys all the time, when you face adversity that you don't control, you have two options. You can slump your shoulders, you can be upset, you can grumble, you can be a de-energizer, you can get everyone around you to be upset, or you can look at that adversity in the eye and positively say, good, we're gonna take the toughest schedule and we're gonna run with it. And that's what our players do day in and day out. A Cadem Stadium for four years, good. The second week of spring camp, I step in meetings and I say, guys, it's gonna be two degrees, it's gonna be windy this whole week, it's gonna be sideways rain. They look at me, coach, good. And that's how we approach it. And as our guys know at other schools, Guelph, Western, Queens, after practice, they go in as a team into their beautiful pavilions. They sit down for a nice sit-down meal. We're grabbing cold chicken shawarmas and we're eating them in the locker room. Good, that's the Laurier way and that's what we're all about. So as you peruse through uh, the rest of the schedule, I've got one uh, story for you. Um, last year I got in a text uh, from someone in the room. And this gentleman in the room said, Coach, I noticed you play down in London the last uh, week of the year. I would love for you to come out, bring your team for a dinner after the game at the Tilsonburg Inn and Mill. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna text my teammate, or I'm gonna text the leadership group, I'm gonna text the coaches and see. Shortly after, I let Pat McMahon and the McMahon family know that yes, after our game in London, we're gonna come out to the Tilsonburg Inn and Mill. Fast forward to the end of October, the number one Western Mustangs, 7-0, are hosting the 7-0, number three ranked Laurier Golden Hawks. This was an epic end of the regular season game. Right? You've got the clash of two titans at stakes, a first week by in the OUA playoffs, at stakes, uh, hosting the Yates Cup in a few weeks. That game, as you remember, we were down 27-0 at halftime. Uh, we quickly reeled back within seven minutes in the third quarter, 28 points to take a 28-27 lead before falling in the fourth quarter. And as you can imagine, we're all sports fans, ex-athletes. Um, 
the physical pounding that took, the mental drain that took. And I'll be honest, Pat and McMahon family, it was kind of tough knowing we just lost, we got an hour bus ride to Tilsonburg, we got to put a smile on our face, have a meal, we got an hour bus ride back to Laurier from there. I just want to go in a dark room, I want to sulk, I want to swear, I want to punch, you know, this sucks. But I kid you not, and this is a good lesson in life, whether it's adversity in business, adversity with a football team, adversity in life, a good meal with the people you love is the best medicine. And I can tell you, we went in there all slumped shoulders into the Tilsonburg Inn and Mill. We came out of there with our chests out. Pat and his team at the mill, prime rib dinners. Leader chocolate milks were on the table. Our players thought, coach, where are the glasses? Pat came out and said, no, those chocolate milks are for each of you. And if you want another, let me know. I was just worried about the bus ride home. But <laughs> Pat and his crew put on an amazing spread. And I'll tell you this, fast forwarding to this year, uh, the 2024 OUA schedule came out later than ever. Two days after, I get a text. Coach, I notice you don't play in London this year, but I notice you play in Windsor. Any chance you and the boys want to come to the mill before you go down to Windsor? So what is Laurier? It's the people. It's people like Pat, the generosity, the caring, the spirit. So tonight, bid like crazy. Take part in our later raffles. Take part in the heads or tails game. Come to the games this fall. This is a special group of players. They deserve pack stands. They deserve you cheering on. And together, we will reach new heights. Enjoy your evening. Go Hawks, go!